there, and welcome to Rehoboth United. Thank you so much for spending part of your day with us. We're so glad to have you here. My name is Pam, I'm your host. Worship service will begin shortly with an opening from one of our church leaders, followed by a few song selections from our praise team. The lyrics will be up on the screen so you can sing along and engage in worship however you feel comfortable. Afterwards, the Word of God will be brought forth. Make sure that you like and subscribe now and feel free to share this video with your friends. We pray you feel welcome and enjoy today's service. Today, in the name of Jesus. First, we have to give honor to our pastor, David Lorick, our lady Frankie, Mother Lorick, my mom, Lady Mary, everybody that's in the house. A special thank you, I know it's already been said, but it's worth repeating. Thank you, Sister Kathy Bostic, Sister Catracia Bostic, our incredible ministry, our kids ministry staff leaders. They have worked so diligently with our young people, and they have done an awesome job as they prepare for today. Last, but certainly not least, I want to thank the parents, the grandparents, and any other adults in the house who have contributed to the lives of these young people. Give yourselves a hand. We appreciate the role that you are playing in the lives of our children. And aren't you excited? Aren't you just ready to praise God along with our children? They have done an incredible job because they are, after all, incredible kids. Today is going to be just a little bit different, and I will need some water. As this message was prepared, with our children in mind. And adults, because you are adults, you're going to get a little piece of whatever is given. But we have prepared the message with our children in mind specifically. So go with us. Let us focus on our scripture for today, which is found in Matthew chapter 19, verse 14. The King James Version says, but Jesus said, suffer little children, and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. The Living Translation says, but Jesus said, let the little children come to me, and don't prevent them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. The thought that I want you to take home with you today and this is a thought that is appropriate for everybody, is don't do it. Stay in God's hand. Can you say that after me? Don't do it. Stay in God's hand. Thank you for saying it with me. Matthew 19, 14 is a complicated verse, but yet it's kind of simple. But I'm going to start by giving you a little bit of background, basically for the sake of the children, so that they know what this scripture is all about. Those who are 18 years and younger, I want you to listen very carefully because the teacher in me says, I want you to be able to answer three questions <laughs> that come from this verse. Also, everybody, I'm going to ask you to participate with me this morning. If I ask you to do something as we are learning together, please do it. Adults, I would like your participation as well. That way, 
you are showing support for our children. So are we good with that? If I ask you to do something, you're going to do it. Thank you. So here are the three questions that we will answer as we go through this message. Everyone ready? Everyone listening? I'm looking. The first question is, who was Jesus talking to? The second question, what did Jesus say to them? And the third question, why did Jesus want children to come to him? I want you to listen to those questions again. And this time, I want you to repeat them after me. Okay? Everybody, listen ears on. Who was Jesus talking to? What did Jesus say to them? Why does Jesus want children to come to him? Okay. So now I'm going to give you the background for this scripture. During this time of Jesus' life, when this scripture was written, Jesus was very, very, three more very, very, very famous. And people loved Jesus during this time of his life. Everywhere he went, there was a crowd around him. People followed him. If they heard that he was going to be at the lake, they went to the lake. If they heard that he was going to be at the synagogue, the crowd went to the synagogue. If they heard that he was going to be on the mountainside, guess what? They showed up where? At the mountainside. They showed up. They were really into Jesus. Jesus was more famous than any movie star you can think about. He was more famous than any NFL football player you can name. He was more famous than the president of the United States. When Jesus was in town, everybody wanted to go see him. If they were selling tickets, everybody wanted a ticket. Sick people, well people, rich people, poor people, young people, old people, good people, as well as bad people. It didn't matter. When people heard about Jesus, they wanted to go see him. On this particular day, Jesus was traveling from village to village. And in those days, people walked everywhere they went. No cars, no buses, no trains, no planes. They walked everywhere they went. And Jesus was walking to the next village. And all of a sudden, somebody said, I see him. Hey, y'all, I see him. He's coming. Jesus is coming. And guess what happened? Everybody got closer. They crowded in because wanted to see him. They tried to get in front of each other so they could get a good glimpse of Jesus. Many parents were there, and they brought their children along because they wanted their children to see Jesus. Other parents tried to move up closer and jump the line because they wanted Jesus to touch their child and bless them. But when Jesus, saw, when Jesus' disciples saw this happening, the disciples said, oh, no, that's not going to happen. Uh, when they saw the parents bringing the children to Jesus to be blessed, the disciples stopped them. The disciples told the parents that they could not bother Jesus and they could not bring the children to him. They told the parents that there were sick people that Jesus needed to heal. There were also important people that Jesus needed to teach. And there were sinners that Jesus needed to forgive. The disciples let the parents know that they should not. Just don't bring children to Jesus because Jesus is just way too busy. They said Jesus had too many other important things to do 
for adults instead of wasting his time on children. In the meantime, Jesus was watching what was going on. He was watching the little children and he was watching the disciples and the other adults who were blocking the little children from coming to Jesus. And when Jesus saw the disciples saying, don't bring the children, his heart was sad. His heart was so, so very sad. He was not happy to that with that. So he said to his disciples, wait. Just stop a minute. Wait. What are you doing? Why are you blocking the children from coming to me? Why are you trying to stop them from being blessed? And then Jesus just stopped everything. And he stopped everybody. And he looked at his disciples. And he looked at his helpers. And he said, Suffer the little children and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. In other words, let the little children come to me and don't prevent them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Okay, now we know the story. Now let's take a few minutes to think about what the story means. And see if we can answer those three questions that I asked you at the beginning. I asked you a who, what, and why question. We know that Jesus was the one who was talking in the verse. So our first question is, who was Jesus talking to? Uh-huh, I hear it a little bit. Who was Jesus talking to? His disciples, his disciples, and other helpers. Yes. Now, this question, were his disciples adults or were they children? They were adults. You're right. So when Jesus said, let the little children come to me and don't prevent them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven, he was talking to adults. He was talking to adults. But do you know that there's something very, very special about the Bible and about Jesus? Even though Jesus was in the Bible and he was talking to adults who lived a long, 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 long time ago, the same words apply to adults today. Jesus' word never stops talking. And he was talking to the adults way back then, and he's talking to the adults now. He's talking to adults who are sitting right here in this church today, looking at me. He was talking to adults who may be sitting right beside you. He was talking to the adults who might be sitting across the aisle from you. Now, children, here's your part to participate. Whether you're up here with the blue t-shirt on or not, it's your time to participate. I want you to look around. And I want you to see any adult. Just look around and, and see any adult. Get eye contact with them. So you know and they know that I'm getting ready to talk to you. <laughs> All right. I want you to point at that adult. And I want you to say to them, Jesus was talking. Uh-uh. Point to them. Then I want you to say it like this. Y'all, everybody pointing? I want you to say, oh, Jesus was talking to you. <laughs> All right, hold up. Child, child, point to an adult. Let's get this together. I want you to go like this. <gasps> Jesus was talking to you. There we go. Now let's get the adults in on the action. Adults. I want you, <laughs> this one's going to be a little bit tricky. I want you to point the finger at yourself. And I want you to say, oh, Jesus was talking to me. Oh, my gosh. It gets a little bit personal, doesn't it? Thank you for participating. Now we know 
who Jesus was talking to. That's our first question. The next question was, what did Jesus say to them? But let's just back up. I want to recap. Who was Jesus talking to? Not just to his disciples and the helpers, but to all of us. That's who Jesus was talking to. Adults. You got it. Then Jesus um, made two statements. What did he say to them? The first statement he said was, suffer the little children, or let the little children, or allow the little children. Jesus wanted the adults to be tolerant of the children. Allow the little children. The next thing Jesus said is, forbid them not to come unto me. That means don't prevent them from coming to me. Don't have a rule against children coming to me. And yes, Jesus said that in the Bible many, many years ago, but we just learned that he's still talking. And who is he talking to? Now, I want you to do something a little bit different this time. I want you to look at that same adult that you talked to, the same one that you pointed to, and this time, I want you to give them a big air hug. You know how to do an air hug, right? I want you to give them a big air hug, but I'm not finished yet. You got a little bit more to go along with the air hug. I want you to say to them, air hug, please don't stop me from coming to Jesus. Please don't stop me from coming to Jesus. Go ahead and do that. Okay, did you air hug somebody? Please don't stop me from coming to Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So now we know what Jesus told his disciples. We know who he was talking to and what he said. Let the children come and don't stop them. The last part of the verse answers our very last question, which is a why question. Why questions are a little bit harder than who and what questions. Jesus in this verse gives the reason why he wants Jesus to come, he wants children to come to him. He told them the reason. The reason is for of such is the kingdom of heaven. This is the reason. In other words, people who are in the kingdom of heaven are like children. So the real question becomes, what are children like? If the people in the kingdom of heaven are like children, then what are children like? What is it about children that made Jesus use them as an example of the kind of people who are in the kingdom of heaven? I have two objects here that will help me explain it to our children. The adults, you can roll along if you want to. <laughs> the first object I have is a glass vase, just a small glass vase. The second object is a Ziploc bag containing squishy dough. Squishy dough. Children know what it is. The adults are going, squishy dough. <laughs> I will use the vase to represent the adults, I will use the squishy dough to represent the children. Okay, so let's start with our vase. This is a vase and it represents the adults. And I'm going to describe it. It's blue, it's made of hard glass, it's round at the bottom and it's skinny at the top with a little opening. It has ridges or lies that go all around the side to give it some texture. But you know what else I notice about this vase? I can't change the size of it, even if I try. I can pull on it, I cannot change it, it's still gonna be a little vase. I cannot change the shape of it. I can squeeze it in my hand and try to squish it, and it's still gonna be a round vase. I can't change the color of it. 
I can take a magic marker and mark all over it and it still will be a blue vase. The person who made this vase decided on the size, the shape, and the color. If there were things that he didn't like about the vase, he changed it while he was making it, but not after it was finished. It had to be changed in the process while he was forming it. The only way that this vase can be changed is if I break it or if I put it in some very hot fire and melt it. That will preach. Now, <laughs> now, this vase is like adults in many ways. I said it represents adults. You got it, didn't you? Okay, I'm going with it. Adults, you already finished being made. You already formed. Adults have their size. They have their shape. They have their color. And once a person is grown and they are an adult, it is much harder to change them. And just like this vase, changing them either requires that they are broken or they ex experience some fiery situation. I'm going to stop with that right there because we're not going there. <laughs> now let's look at my second object, the squishy dough. We said that the squishy dough represents our children. And let's look at the squishy dough. I've got some yellow squishy dough here. Let me describe it. It's soft. It's pliable. It's squishy. That's why they call it squishy dough. It doesn't have any definite shape. Now, it can easily be formed into anything I want it to. I can make it flat if I want to. I can make it into a square if I want to. I can even change the color if I want to and if it cooperates. I can even change the color because it's squishy though. Let me get on my paper. <coughs> So, this squishy dough represents children. If I want it to be bigger or longer, it doesn't matter. It's squishy dough. All I have to do is give it a little tug, a little pull, and it cooperates. It does whatever I want it to do, because after all, I'm the boss. I'm the maker. The squishy dough is in my hand. So since I'm the maker, I can do it the way I want to. And the other thing about squishy dough is this. I can't break it. Even if I tried to, it bounces back. I can't even break it because it bounces back. That's squishy dough. You know what? Children are the same way. They are yielding. They are pliable, they cooperate, whatever the maker wants them to be when they grow up, they cooperate. They respond to the nudges and the pressures when the maker is shaping them. And if they hit against a little bit of hardness that should break them, guess what? Children bounce back. And this is the reason that Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me. That's why he said to his disciples and to all the adults, allow the children to come to me and don't stop them. Jesus want children before they become adults. I'm going to repeat that. Jesus wants children before they become adults. When they become adults, they're hard to change. He wants them when he can work with them. He wants them when he can form them. 
He wants them when he can shape them. That's why Jesus said, don't stop these children from coming to me. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. I want everybody, if you're under, if you're 18 or under, to look at me. I want eye contact. If you're going to sleep, wake up. I want you to look at Sister Mary right now. Because I'm going to talk straight to you. Parents, you can listen if you want to, or you, it can be your turn to go to sleep. But I want the children to look at me. God is your maker. He is the one who formed you. He's taking in every word. God shaped you. God is making you. He is the one who gave you life. And just like I'm holding this squishy dough in my hand, God is holding you in his hand. Right now, while you are still young, he is trying to shape you. Right now, while you're still young, he's trying to give you your form. Right now, while you're still young, he's making you into the person he wants you to be. But there's one big difference between you and my squishy dough. And the difference is this squishy dough has no life. It doesn't, it can't do anything but stay in my hand because it has no life. But you're different. You have life. You're in God's hand, but you make a decision whether or not you stay there. This squish, this squish your dough, it's going to stay in my hand until I decide to put it down. But you, you're in God's hand, and you need to make a decision whether or not you're going to stay there. You decide if you're going to stay in God's hand or if you're going to do something different. I'm going to ask you a tough question. I'm still talking to children. Adults, you can wake up when you get ready. Again, this is for our young people. I want you to raise your hand if you want to grow up to be a good, happy person who does the right thing and stays out of trouble. All right. I want you to raise your hand if you want to become the best person you can possibly be. I'm looking. I'm looking. That's great. And that's what God wants for you, too. But... He needs your cooperation. He needs you to put yourself, place yourself in his hand and let him take control of your life just like I have control of this squishy dough. Just like I can squash it, squish it, do whatever I want to. That's what you need to allow Jesus to do in your life when you place your life in Jesus' hand. So how do you do that? You know, grown-ups have a way of saying a lot of stuff that children do not understand. So how do you put yourself in God's hand? It's not hard. Not hard at all. First, you can just start by just talking to God every day. Just um, ask him to be your friend. All y'all like friends. Just ask Jesus to be your friend. And then... Let him know how much you love him. Say, God, I love you. Jesus, I love you. And the next thing you can do is find time to read your Bible. I hope you have a Bible. Find time to read your Bible. And that's God's way, one of his ways of talking back to you. So you talk to him and allow him to talk back to you. Then you can ask God 
to come into your heart and you can ask God to fill your heart with his spirit. You're like, oh, I don't know about that. Yes, you can. You are not too young. You are not too young. You are not too young to be baptized in water in the name of Jesus and ask God to fill you with his Holy Ghost. And he will do it. You may have heard in what Tina said about me, I was filled with the Holy Ghost at age 13. I still had a lot to learn, but I knew that I wanted God in my life. And you can do the same thing. You can get in God's hand and stay there. And then when people come around you or situations try to get your focus off God, you can be smart. How many of you want to be smart? Oh, how many of you want to be smart? Okay. You can be, <laughs> you can be smart and you can say to yourself, I'm going to stay in God's hand. Can you say that with me? I'm going to stay in God's hand. I heard Cyrus. I need to hear the rest of y'all. Say it with me. I'm going to stay in God's hand. Okay, so now, this is the beginning of a new school year. And school is one of the best places to practice staying in God's hand. Why? Because it's one of the best places to jump out of God's hand. So we're going to help you to understand how to stay in God's hand. I'm going to give you a few examples. Example one, your friends, you go to school, your friends want to be disruptive in class, and they, are, they, they think it's funny. No matter what the teacher says, they just keep on talking and playing, and you want to be part of that group because you, have, you want to have fun too. But what I'm going to say to you is, don't do it. Stay in God's hand. Say that after me. Don't do it. Stay in God's hands. Another example. Some people in your class, they say things to you to make you feel bad because you're smart. You do your homework. You read books. And you speak correctly. And they want to pick at you. And then you start feeling like you need to change who you are so you can be like them. But I'm saying to you, don't do it. Stay in God's hands. Say it with me. Don't stay in God's hands. And maybe some people that you know think it's pretty cool to use profanity and curse words and to talk back to the teacher or even talk back to your parents, they think that's pretty cool. And you think that you might look like you're a tough person instead of looking like a kid if you did the same thing. But I'm saying to you, you got it now, say it with me. Don't do it. Stay in God's hand. And here's another one. You want to go to sleep in class because you stayed up until after 12 o'clock midnight playing video games. The teacher just keeps on talking and talking and talking and talking, and you feel like putting your head on the desk. I'm telling you, don't do it. Stay in God's hands. Listen, and this is a big one, and this might be the last one. If you are one of those children who keeps on doing the wrong things over and over, you keep on getting in trouble, you get sent to the guidance counselor, you get sent to the principal's office, you get sent to the back of the class, you get sent to in-school suspension, you get sent to an alternative school, it's time for you to stop it. Just stop it. Just stop it. Say this after me. Don't do it. Stay in God's hands. Young people of Rehoboth, I want you to know one thing. You are very special. 
But you have to remember that God is still shaping you. He hasn't finished with you yet. You're not done yet. You're not an adult. I don't care if you think you're grown. You're not grown. He is still making you into what he wants you to be. Don't be anxious to be your own person. Don't try to be an adult before you finish being a child. And don't follow the crowd when you don't even know where the crowd is going. Say it with me. Don't do it. Stay in God's hand. I skipped over one that was real important, and I'm going to go back to it. Because this is important. Someone wants you to be their girlfriend or their boyfriend, and you haven't even earned half the credits that you need before you can graduate from high school. Well, yeah, I'm the teacher, and I'm going to say it again. Somebody wants you to be their girlfriend or their boyfriend, and you haven't even earned, maybe not even one, but I know you haven't earned half the credits that you need to graduate from high school. I'm telling you to tell them no. Don't do it. Stay in God's hands. I'm through with that one. But on the other hand, there's some, pe there's some students in here who they're really trying their best to do what is right. If that's you, raise your hand. You're trying your best to do what's right. Raise your hand. I hope I see a lot of hands on that one. You listen to your parents. You respect your parents. You listen to your teachers. You do your homework. And God is making you into a beautiful person. But I'm here to tell you, you still have to stay in God's hands. God loves children. Children are special to his heart. And he loves you. But you need to give your life to him while you are still being shaped. You need to give your life to him while you're still being formed. He wants to be the one to mold you. He wants to be the one to make you into someone who can live for him. But the choice is yours. I can't make that choice. Your mama can't make that choice. Because when you go to school, your mama is not looking at you. But guess who is looking at you? God is looking at you. You are the one who can make the decision to stay in God's hand. Thoughts may enter your mind to tell you, forget what that lady said up there. Forget the message. When you get around your friends, you might like, oh, that's for church, and I'm in school now. Don't do it. Stay in God's hands. Students, I'm very serious. I've never been more serious in my life. Take this message home with you. When anything comes to your mind to do something or say something that is just a little bit sketchy, I want you to remember that lady standing up there saying, don't do it. Stay in God's hand. I want you to continue to say that phrase over and over and over until you're saying it in your sleep and you realize who you're living for. Also, I want you to help each other. If you see one of your church friends about to do something wrong, remind them. And I've given you something to say. Just say, hey, don't do it. Stay in God's hands. Because Jesus said, suffer the little children and forbid them not to come unto me for such it's the kingdom of heaven. Thank you for being a part of our worship service. We pray that you are encouraged by today's message. If you would like to stay connected with us throughout the week, follow us on social media by using the handle at Rehoboth United on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, or visit us at RehobothUnited.org. We believe that God has a place here just for you. You are special in His eyes. Our hope is that you feel His love stronger today than you ever have before. Remember, this is another year to live holy by just doing it. 
Thanks again for being with us. See you next time.